Continuing with my Grey's Anatomy videos, today is my dream's turn. He's a very interesting card for me to talk about because when I first watched the show, I liked him. And even before I watched the show, I already knew about him and Derek and Meredith. Like, I think if you didn't start watching Grey's Anatomy when the show started, like if you started watching it later on, you probably already knew about Meredith and Derek or like you knew something about the show. In my case, I already know that Meredith and Derek were the it couple. And I also knew the fans' perception about Derek Shepard. They all loved him. So I guess that kind of has something to do with my prejudgment on his character. Everyone liked him. No one was saying an ill thing about him. He's my dreamy. He's perfect, right? However, the more I rewatched the show, which the last time was just a few months ago, the more I found issues on his character, the less charming I found him, and the more I despised him. I'm gonna cement this video like I usually do, and in every segment there will be a specific storyline that has something to do with Derek and I will give my thoughts on that situation. This is not gonna be a I hate Derek type of video because I don't hate him but I don't think that he is that perfect guy, Mac dreamy guy that the show tried to portray us. Before I start, I'm gonna give you a brief description of who is Derek Shepard. He was a neurosurgeon, former head of the neurosurgery at Grace Sloan Memorial Hospital, a member of the board, and for a brief time, chief of surgery at the same hospital. Prior to moving to Seattle, he used to live in New York, raised by his single mom after his dad was keyword at his own shop by some robbers while Derek and his little sister Amelia witnessed the whole thing. This event affecting him in a large part of his life and probably what made him become a neurosurgeon to save lives. His nickname was Dreamy by Christina and Meredith because of his charming personality and I guess good looks. Derek is introduced within the first few minutes of the first episode as someone that Meredith met at a bar and went home with. Later in the same episode, it's revealed that he is an attending at the same hospital that Meredith is starting her internship in. Initially, he's rejected by Mayer several times to what he just dismissed and continued to insist until she eventually said yes. A piece of advice for all my girlies and boys and non-binary people out there. If someone says no, don't insist. Don't, don't pressure them into eventually saying yes because if that person didn't want to go out with you in the first place, the seventh time that you ask them, they still don't want to go out with you and they will just say yes to pity you and you don't want to date someone that would only say yes to your date because they pity you and because they feel bad for you and because they feel pressured to say yes not because they truly want to spend time with you and in the other side of the spectrum if someone is insistent so much don't say yes if you truly want to say no because i've seen way too many story times on tiktok of he was a 10 but insert horror story because they say yes to the day because they were bored. So piece of advice, if someone says no, respect that and cut it out. What he failed to tell Meredith is that he's already married and that's why he left New York. Hi, I'm Addison Shepard. The worst part is if it wasn't because Addison came to Seattle, would he have told Mayor? And if so, when? Was he planning to hide this forever from Meredith? Or was he eventually going to tell her? And if so, when was he going to tell her? Addison and Derek have been married for 11 years. They both met at med school, I believe. And with both of them being very successful, caused them to grow apart and to distance themselves from each other. That caused Addison to shit on Derek when his bestie, Mark. Derek found them in bed one day and left. 
Alison comes to Seattle to talk and she gives him the divorce paper in case that's what he wants. Now, this is when Max Dreamy becomes Max Stupid. I don't understand why he did this. He often calls Addison Satan and ruler of all evil, so he doesn't really have the best things to say about Addison. He clearly doesn't want to be with Addison, and on top of that, he's already in love with Meredith. You know, he left New York, so he clearly doesn't want to stay married with Addison. He wasn't even picking up her calls, and he wants nothing to do with Addison. But the minute that she's giving him the out that he wants, he's like, hmm. You know what? Let's try and fix this mess, even though he doesn't want to, even though he's miserable while being back to Addison, like even though like that decision that I don't understand why, like that's what he wanted. He wanted to get away from Addison, but he decided to give it a chance because, oh, you can't just throw away 11 years of marriage. You already did. Like you already did when you both, instead of trying to fix your problems, you distance yourself from the problems. Like you walked away instead of talking to Addison, which I understand no one to talk to Addison after she's shitting on you. But you still, instead of being like, okay, what happened? Are we going to talk about this? Like, why are you sleeping with my bestie? Like what is going on? Instead of that, you just moved to Seattle. So you didn't want to want to put the effort at the first place. So why putting the effort now and on top of that Addison already threw the 11 years of marriage uh, out of the window the minute that she slept with Mark so what is there to fix when you both have clearly moved on especially Derek he has clearly moved on from that marriage so why do you want to stay miserable they even try couples therapy which neither of them especially Derek doesn't want to put the effort in so he's just he just likes being miserable and then at some point after he sleeps with Meredith like they realize that their marriage was over a long time ago and let each other go hi I just figured out how I can feel myself on my computer but I don't know why I'm so firm on the fact of I don't understand why Derek is going back to Addison because without him being in this messy love triangle situation, we wouldn't have had the iconic Meredith scene begging for some dare stick. Your choice, it's simple. Her or me. But Derek, I love you. So pick me. Choose me. Love me. Let's talk about the power imbalance in the relationship. Grey's Anatomy is filled with this type of relationships. Almost everyone was in an intern slash resident attending relationship, which I guess is the equivalent of the student teacher trope. But unlike Ari and Ezra, everyone is an adult here. A student teacher or employee boss relationships are built on that inequality of power in their professional lives and most times that translates into their personal lives. Derek to a certain degree likes the fact that Mare is just an intern. He likes the fact that he has to teach her and that's fine while they're at work because at the end of the day that's part of his work in a teaching hospital not only treat patients, but also teach the interns and the residents how to do what he does. So that's okay. But this dynamic is often played off in their personal life. In later seasons, when he's already an attending, he still treats her as if she's just an intern who doesn't know better. And an example would be in season A, nine-ish, when Mayor passes her board and is applying for fellowships in different parts of the country. After the plane crash and her sister Alexis' death, she wanted to stay in Seattle because that's where she grew up, that's where family is, and she doesn't want to go away, which is understandable, but Derek refused to listen to her wishes about staying in Seattle and was looking for a place in Boston, a place to work. He was convinced that Meredith would change her mind, but that never happened, so they stayed in Seattle. What bothered me about this situation was the self-absorbed way and the, I guess, egocentric, I don't know if that would be the word for this, but 
the attitude that he was talking about like oh yeah she'll change her mind she'll change her mind like as if she's just a child when she's not she's an adult and if she wants to stay in Seattle because I don't understand why he wanted to move to Boston at the end of the day because they like they already built a house in Seattle they already had a, they were already have established a life there so why move to Boston I just don't get it and like I don't understand why he was so inclined and so stubborn about let's go to Boston let's go to Boston like she doesn't want to go to Boston and the reason why they're even considering going there is because of her fellowship she doesn't want to she wants to stay here suck it up <laughs> stop being so annoying talking about the power imbalance legally i don't think there's anything wrong with dating someone of like a higher power in the workplace i don't think so i don't really know but i do find it to a certain degree unethic because you will in one way or another advantage your partner in the workplace like it happened with bailey and ben at some point in i don't remember which season but i think it was in somewhat season 10 or something like that i think the elevators were not working in the hospital for some reason and he had to emergency perform a c-section on a pregnant lady and in the moment that he has the tan blade and he has to cut, the elevator door opens and you can see in the video that he's looking at it, but they all the board affirmed that he was just so focused that he didn't actually see the door open. So, But the thing is that he still performed a procedure in the hall where that could have been avoided because the elevator was already working so that could have been easily avoided he didn't realize it and we can you know agree to disagree whether he did see the elevator or he didn't like he was so in his head that although we can see him looking at it he wasn't actually seeing it we can discuss that but to a certain degree he does have to get a consequence because of it and bailey gives him i think it was like a six month um suspension from the or and he's like i'm your husband you're supposed to give me some kind of advantage some kind of perks and she's like that's a perk i should have fired you but i didn't because you're my husband because i was put in a very difficult situation are you seeing what i'm trying to say like I'm not, I'm not saying it's illegal, I'm saying to a certain degree it's, in, it's unethical and Derek did that to Meredith many times. He spent so much time on Neuro, not only because she enjoyed it, but mainly because it was Derek there and she was also so good in Neuro because, well, Derek spent too much time teaching her and giving her some kind of unfair advantage compared to her other um, peers because she was sleeping with her bus, with her teacher. Season eight was a pain in my fucking ass. First the musical episode. Don't quite know how to say. Then this whole fucking mess when the clinical tried in Sola. God, Grace and Annie want to fucking kill me. Derek wanted to try and find a cure for Alzheimer's after being inspired by Meredith's mom disease. Initially, he shows Alex to work with him, but then asks Meredith instead. Richard's wife Adele had Alzheimer's and asked Derek to put her into the trial. She didn't get in at first because it wasn't advanced enough only by one point. Since the disease was progressing rapidly, she eventually got into the trial. Meredith switched some envelopes to make sure Adele got the active agent and not the placebo one. That causing her to temper the trial. They all find out and Derek is furious <laughs> and unable to understand why she did it and why she messed up all of his work. She should have gotten consequences for her actions, but Richard took the blame, knowing that Mary only did it because she wanted to help Adele. And Derek is blacklisted by the FDA and the data of the trial they send it to another doctor. Derek is so fucking mad at this point. While all of this was happening, Meredith and Derek were trying to adopt Sola 
a baby that they're treated under the Kids from Africa program. They were granted temporary custody not long after they found out that Meredith had tempered his trial. Because Dere was angry at her, Mer brought Sola home alone. <laughs> And sometime after, Sola was taken away by the social worker due to Meredith being fired and lying about their marriage status. Sola came to the hospital because of some problems she had and Alex in Arizona had to perform surgery on her despite not being able to tell Derek and Meredith. Alex does it anyway and Meredith starts crying and Derek finally forgives her. They got a hearing to try and get custody again thanks to Alex, but it was cancelled. However, the next morning, the social worker brought Sola and told them they had full custody. I've seen many people mention that Mayor gave up neurosurgery because of Derek so they could save their marriage, which I disagree with. I believe that Mayor showed some real talent uh, for Noro, but I think part of why she liked it so much was because of Derek because she spent a lot of time with Derek and Noro that she wasn't even exploring other options and obviously that affected her in advantage that's why she was so good besides the natural talent she was also so good because she was spending too much time on neurosurgery but I think for Meredith it was general surgery all alone. I think getting away from neuro helped her consider other options and realize that general surgery is where she excels at. Was Derek right not to trust Meredith after the clinical trial mess? At work? Yes. Outside of work? Has his wife? Has a future mother? Hell no. <laughs> and this is the problem when dating someone you work with. The issues at work don't stay at work. And I say this as someone that is currently dating someone I work with. I understand Derek's anger towards Meredith about the trial. At the end of the day, he lost it, even though he was nowhere near getting a cure, but okay. However, leave her home when a brand new baby that Mary and Christina have to take her on their own, even though he's the father, not Christina and not only Meredith, like they're both adopting Zola. And he's so mad that he can't even be there for the baby that he had to convince Meredith to adopt. Him acting childish, calling Meredith names such as reckless and stupid when he himself has been reckless and stupid, such as driving super fast after the shooting because he feels invincible and again, getting custody of Sola and leaving Mayor to do everything alone because poor Derek, he didn't get his chance to be a god. This mess pisses me off so much because yes, Meredith did something wrong. She tried to do a good thing because she wanted to help Adele. Like if they happened to find a cure, she wanted that cure to go towards Adele, someone that she knows and, and cares about. You know, she cares about Richard so much because he's like a second father to her. So she wants Azel to be well and she wants to help her, even though the way to help her is not, even though the way to help her is causing issues in her marriage. And I understand Derek being mad at her because at the end of the day, like he, he wasn't doing this for Meredith, but he did get inspired by her mother. And so I guess in his twisted mind, in some way he was doing this for Meredith, but he actually wasn't, he was only doing this for himself. I, I can understand not being able to be with her for some days because he's really pissed. So I can understand him not staying at home and staying with somebody else because he wants some time alone to reflect and to try and figure out what to do next. Okay, great. However, Sola, you wanted to adopt her. Both of you did. And the minute that you get that temporary custody, you walk away because you're so mad at Meredith that you can't even take care of your child. And then when Meredith runs away for a few hours when Sola, because she was so scared of losing her, um, Derek gets 
Dara gets so mad at her for being so reckless, for not thinking through, for... And, and he even says at some point that if they don't get custody of Sola, it's because of Meredith. Derek, Meredith was at least trying to get Sola in some way. She was just at least fighting for it. You were just, oh, Mayor, you did this wrong. Um, it's all your fault. Like, fuck you, dude. <laughs> Hand was severely injured and had some nerve damage during the plane crash. Kali was able to fix it and he thought he would never operate again. After the birth of their second child, he promised Mare to take a step back to take care of the kids so she could shine. Derek was helping Kali create robotic limbs through mind control and Derek developed some brain sensors to make them work. He gets a call from the president asking him to join their project brain mapping initiative. He accepts the offer and Mare got mad that he didn't keep his promise or at least talk to her before accepting and now she has to step down to take care of the kids. Sometime after the president offered him a permanent position in DC, Mare was going to join him but Christina told her that she Don't let what he wants eclipse what you need. He is not the son. You are. So she decides to stay in Seattle and Derek turned down the job because he decided that Meredith and the kids were more important. This caused him to be bitter all the time and resent her for not being supportive of his decision. He pressured her to make the most of her career to make up for the sacrifice that he made. They get into a heated argument and he compares her to her mother. A personal assistant of the president offers him the job again and he refuses, resulting in Mare and Derek's biggest fight yet. He was compromising himself for her, which made her feel resentment. He explains it's because she never showed support for his decision and very loud he says he gave up everything, expressing how that project was very important to him. She replied she never asked him to stay and should have gone to DC. He calls the president, accepting the job, and packs his stuff. At the airport, they talk over the phone to try and make it work since neither of them wanted the relationship to end. He starts helping one of the fellows on her research. She kisses him and he stops it saying he loves his wife and quickly took a flight to see Mayor for getting his fun and kiss um, at the lab. Mare called him and the fellow picked up, making Mare think that Derek was cheating on her. Once they talk, he tells her that he can't live without her and she replies that she can, but doesn't want to. Not long after, on his way to the airport, he witnessed a car crash and he saves four people before the ambulance arrives. He returns to his car and a semi crashes into his side of the car resulting him going to the hospital and dying after the doctors failed to take a head CT. Let's go to this in two parts. The first thing is that he made a promise to Mayor because she's a new attending. This is her time to shine. He already had that time a few years ago. Well, more than a few years ago. He already had his time. It's a big deal for Meredith to try and balance her work life and her personal life. She fears to be like her mother who constantly put work before her. She suffers so much as a kid, as a child of someone that never really wanted kids. So she doesn't want her kids to ever feel that way, to ever feel like they're being neglected the way that she felt. So she asked Derek to make that compromise to her and he's like, will do. On top of that, he's unable to operate or at least he's unable to operate as he used to. So I think it's a perfect time for him to take a step down so he can, you know, his hand can fully heal and also take care of the kids while Meredith is starting her life as a new general surgeon. So I don't think it's too much to ask to ask your partner to help you out. So he gets the call from the presidency and this is when he did everything wrong. I can understand getting that opportunity and not really wanting to say no because it's in a once in a lifetime opportunity. So I can understand him being very inclined to say yes to accepting before actually thinking what he was doing. So I get it. I get the fact that he wants to say yes, but he made a compromise, he made a promise, 
he first needs to talk to it to to Meredith and knowing Meredith she's not really gonna say no because she knows that this is not something that happens every day and she knows that this is a big opportunity for him so all all he needed to do before accepting that offer was talking to Meredith to be like hey I got this opportunity how can we make this work that's all he had to do and he did everything wrong when you're in a relationship and you know that you have to have a very awkward conversation that you feel like the other person is gonna get mad at you or it's gonna yell or that person is not gonna take it well and you feel like hmm maybe the right thing or the best choice is to not tell them because that's gonna upset them hiding things from your partner is never it's never the way to go because um at first it was an awkward conversation but then when that person when that thing that you hit however long you kept it once that person find out that person is gonna get even more mad even more upset because not only did you lie to them you kept something from them in fear of them being upset so that's something that your partner is never it's that's something that no one is gonna take well so have that awkward conversation because believe me it's better to have the awkward conversation rather than the oh you kept this from me conversation just a piece of advice that's really i would say what pissed meredith off because he never considered her opinion he just did whatever he wanted to do and even though he made a promise to her and that she was struggling with between being a new doctor and having kids he's like yeah whatever i don't care i got this huge opportunity to be god and to be important again because my life like it's reese has if his life is more important than hers has his career is more important than hers and that obviously doesn't feel good in any way especially coming from your partner the way that he's just dismissing her work it doesn't feel good to meredith and that's why she's so pissed off Oh, Meredith also wants to spend a lot of time performing surgery but she can because her self-absorbed husband thinks that his work is way more important than hers. When he was offered the permanent position in DC he said no. Meredith never asked him to stay in Seattle. Meredith never asked him to to not go to DC because she, I think he didn't even told her about the uh, about the offer that they made him. Like he just said no before talking to her. So he it was his decision to say, and he resented her for it. He was mad at her, even though he made that decision on his own. Don't get me wrong. Prioritize your work at the end of the day. Like I think it's okay to put it first. However, when that's negatively impacting your partner and your family, I think that's when it becomes an issue. It's not putting yourself first and hurting your wife and kids in the process. The fact that he's asking her support for a decision that, that he made without consulting her his you only made the decision so she can be oh Derek I'm so grateful that you finally thought of me Derek is just a self-centered self-absorbed egocentric selfish person who always wants a man to do what he wants he doesn't really consider what she wants to do and here's the thing getting married wasn't exactly something that she wanted to do she eventually did get married because she wanted to but that's not something that she wanted to do at first. Moving in together is also something that she didn't want to do at first and he pressured her into doing that. She also didn't want to date him back in session one and she gave in because he was being too fucking annoying. And just like that, I think we can point out in every session, every time that he did something and that she didn't want him to do or she didn't want to do, but end up doing it because he was too annoying, too insisting to begging that Meredith had to say yes now another thing that I found when I was researching um, like things about Derek so I can refresh my memory on 
the things that happen on the show. I saw something that referenced that Derek used to have an afro, but now he uses hair product and that's why he has his hair the perfect way that it is. I don't know, but it reads off has, or to my understanding, it's like they're saying, oh, he had an afro, but now he knows how to take care of his hair. So now his hair is not an afro anymore. You know, like it, it reads off like that. I don't know if that was, maybe I'm reading too much into it. Let me know, but it just, that's, I don't know. It's just another flaw character in Grey's Anatomy that I don't despise, but I just hate, I, I think what I hate about him is that He's supposed to be this perfect dude, this Mac dreamy dude. And at the end of the day, he's just a nightmare. He's Mac, I'm not even gonna do what I was gonna do, but he's just a nightmare person to date. So I think that's what bothers me, that they paint this relationship as perfect and they paint this guy as perfect when he's not. I think that's what bothers me. I don't know if it was intentionally, I don't think it was to call him Mac dreamy when he's actually not. So I'm gonna leave my video right here. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on Derek. Um, and also suggestions uh, for another Grey's Anatomy character that you want me to talk about. I'm planning to make a video on April because I think she's very interesting to talk about as well. Her growth has a person in the show. So yeah. If you have any other suggestions, let me know in the comments. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!